All right, get your notebooks, let's go to work. The purpose and the power of the male man. Understanding the kingdom concept of manhood. Let's get started. I'd like to make a couple of statements first about men and male. The world is filled with males, but very few men. And the reason for that is because male is a biological reality. You're born a male, but you're not born a man. Manhood is a result of development and investment in yourself. So you don't need to do anything to be a male. Just show up. But you got to do a lot of things to be a man. You got to learn, develop, be trained. You have to grow. And that is why the average male is still struggling with being a man because we've been taught that just existing makes us a man and that's not true there are 50 year old males who are not men yet because being a man is different from being born a male this is why there's a struggle male is a natural but manhood is spiritual Male is natural. It's a product of nature. But being a man is spiritual. It is a product of development. Again, this is why a lot of men are struggling with trying to define what manhood is. I'm going to help you today. We live in a century that doesn't understand us as men. As a matter of fact, I don't think that there has been a century in history that is more difficult for the male than this one we're living in right now. And I'm going to prove that hopefully in a few minutes. Here's a statement that was recorded by the first book of Moses about God's creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God only made male and female. So the only species that God recognized in the human race is a male and a female. So some people are trying to create a third one. Now, let me just say something that you didn't think about. Read that verse again out loud, read. So God created man and he made them in two models. What's the models? Male and female created he them. That means anything else that exists was not created by God someone else created that can I hear an amen? amen tell your neighbor I hope God created you <laughs> very important hey Bishop give Bishop a big hand that's the man that's the that's the man that God created Thank you. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says, And God saw that all he had created, and God said it was very good. Now this is an important statement because you see a lot of women have been saying that men are no good. But if God calls something good, come on brothers, go with me now, then it must be good. In spite of what people say, you are good stuff. Clap for yourself. That means that when a man is behaving badly, 
he is not himself <laughs> because according to God the product he made is good so if a man is not living a good manly life then he is not acting his normal self he is malfunctioning God didn't make any male that is no good so under all of the no good there's a good and this conference and this retreat is to work on getting the good that's been buried under what the women call no good because we got good men sitting around you right now tell you and brother I'm a good man y'all got to talk back to me now say it I'm a good man say it loud I'm a good man I don't care what kind of father you had according to God you are a good man give a good man a big hand however the male man is in crisis and the fact that you showed up here today is proof that you recognize that you need some help and there's nothing wrong with asking for help as a matter of fact it takes a real man to go for help what kind of crisis is the male man facing I've identified one of them and that is the number one crisis of the male man write this down is his identity crisis he's struggling with discovering the truth about himself that's why men are imitating so many other things and other men because they haven't found themselves yet that's why we wear other men like Calvin Klein FUBU Sean John we wear other people because we're struggling with our own identity a lot of men don't feel like they are somebody unless they're wearing somebody I just getting started this conference has been called by God and God brought us together to peel away all the other images because deep inside of you is a brother the world needs to meet if you believe that go ahead and shout for five seconds the male in our century is confused about his manhood his masculinity and his sexuality three confusions he's not sure what a man is he's not sure what it means to be masculine and he definitely is struggling with his sexuality identity as a matter of fact I found out something it is so tough to be a real man a lot of men decide to be women we need to confront the problem because it's not difficult to solve once you confront it as a matter of fact, men have confused their cultural and social and traditional roles with the definition of manhood. And that's where our first conflict begins. We have confused what we are culturally and what we do traditionally in our culture and the roles we perform with being synonymous with manhood. And what has happened is all of those have been destroyed. What made your father a man does not exist anymore. I'm going to prove that in a few minutes. What made your father masculine does not exist anymore. What made your father a respectable man in his generation does not exist in yours. So your father, listen carefully now, please listen. This is going to be a tough one. Your father cannot give you advice on how to be a man that's a tough statement the reason is because what made him a man doesn't exist anymore you got to stay with me now I want to show you what happened 
Here are the questions that all men are asking, and you asking them too, because I asked them. Number one, how do you measure manhood? Number two, what is true manhood? Number three, what is masculinity? Number four, what is true male sexuality? Number five, what is the purpose of the male in relationship to the female? Number six, is there a universal definition of manhood and can it be attained? And number seven, where do we get the true male definition from? Who defines what a male and a man is? These are important questions because every culture and every social environment seems to have their own definition of what a man's supposed to be. So these questions plague us. And these questions are not getting some sensible answers. And I know that because I deal with men constantly in seminars and conferences all over the world. I was in Zimbabwe, had a conference for men, 5,000 men in a hotel in Harare, and they kept me there for seven days. I spoke four times a day, 28 times in one week. And they said, just teach us on manhood. When I left, I got a call from the president's office, Mugabe. They sent him a tape. And he said, I want you to come back to the great nation of Zimbabwe to talk to the whole country. Because nations are understanding that men are struggling, including the presidents of countries. You see, title doesn't make you a man. The male is in crisis. Men define their manhood by their social roles. I want you to hear me carefully now because I'm going to see if I can help you shed some of the images that are trapping the great man on the inside of you. We're also suffering from what I call cultural transitions. That means the major shift in the roles of both male and females have confused men. The rules and the roles of society are changing and we need to understand them because the roles that your father performed does not exist anymore and the rules that your father followed to be a man have been cancelled. So if you get your manhood from rules and roles, you are in trouble. Because if you are a man based on what you do, then what you do, if it's cancelled, you no longer exist. And our 21st century has cancelled the rules it has eradicated the roles. Let me show you what I mean. Man's basic concept of manhood have been disrupted. Your father had no problem being a man. It was easy for your granddaddy to be a man. Very easy. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what he did to be a man. You see, men and women are in a state of gender transition. Women are trying to be men. And men, oh Lord, are trying to be women. So everybody's confused. And then women are now doing the things that men used to do. So we are in a, what I call a historical convulsion and a historical convergence. We are in the midst of change. That's why I started out by saying that the most difficult time for men to be alive is in this generation right now that we are in. We are living in the most horrific generation for males because males are in turmoil. What do we mean by historical men's problems? First of all, let me give you some history. Historically speaking, and now when I use the word historically speaking, I want you to think about your great great grandfather. Can you do that for me? Okay, the one you didn't know. Historically speaking, your great-grandfather and your grandfather are now going to talk about them. And maybe even your father, depending on how old you are. If you are 40 to 50 years old today in this room, I am talking about your father right now. Your father, first of all, used to risk his life to provide. In other words, going to work was a risk. The kind of job he did, he wasn't sure he was coming home safe. Probably works in a coal mine or works in a cotton field. 
he works in a, in a diamond mine or he works in a tractor or something in other words the, the work that a man did was always risky therefore he, he the focus was on being a good hunter you see when you go into history in the caveman which is again your granddaddy was like a caveman the caveman always used to be the guy who went out to go hunting and his focus was being a good hunter he had to train to be a good hunter so your grandfather trained to be a good worker he wanted to get a trade that boy's a trade that's why your granddaddy wasn't too concerned about education he wanted a trade he was a hunter i got to go and hunt for a job he actually used to say that didn't he i'm going hunting for a job you see the caveman went hunting to provide for his family number three he felt loved and respected and appreciated because of the risk he took every time a man came home from hunting working hard he got a kiss from his wife why she knew he had a hard risky day therefore he was respected by the woman because of the risk he took every day to go hunting to make a living I'm working on history now hang on therefore the children always bowed when he came in why he was the great provider and he did it at the expense of his own safety number three he was motivated by what food sex children and security you know the caveman was only concerned about these four things right here and your great granddaddy was only concerned about these four things forgetting food sex having some children and securing his family buying a house and protecting them that's all the man thought about so his focus was very simple and number four number five rather his role was simply to be what say it loud provider and what protector that's all it took to be a male to be a man you provided for your family you protected your family that means you went out you risked your life to get food and you built a house to protect your family you provided the house so once a man provided everything and built a house for his family his wife called him a real man his children called him a real man society called him a real man and if you study history not too long ago you will discover that your great great granddaddy was called a man even by the neighbors why because oh he's a good man he provided a house for his wife he provided food for his children he provided protection for his kids that's a real man so his manhood was measured by what he could do and number seven very important his perspective was partnership in other words all he wanted his wife to do was to be a partner and that word partner had very little to do with affection almost zero to do with emotions it had to do with him having her at home while he's out working I go to risk my life you protect the house that's the partnership I buy the food you cook it that's the partnership I I give you a sperm you produce the kids and feed them that's the partnership don't expect nothing else from me so we are partners now that partnership worked very well but the woman also had a perfect balance in this deal first of all the woman felt loved and respected because every time he came home food was cooked children were in bed sleeping not disturbing him the house was clean so the man respected the woman because she was a perfect partner number two she gave birth and she nurtured the children so he respected and loved her and also she raised the kids and created a home while he was out risking his life to buy the house and pay for the food so the woman had a perfect job and the man had a perfect job and they knew each other's roles and those roles never collided Therefore, the woman was honored by the man because he knew he couldn't be out risking his life at the same time bringing the kids up, cooking food, and cleaning house. So the man did his part, the woman did her part. There was a perfect partnership based on roles. What were the implications? Listen carefully, men. Number one, your grandfather lived in a hostile environment. Every time he went out, Women had to pray for him to come back. A lot of men never came back. They died on the job. When a hunter goes out to hunt in the wild and leave the wives in the, in the village, the wives had to hope they come back because the wild beasts might kill them. 
And this, that was true in our society. When a man went out to, to work, he could catch tuberculosis in the coal in the coal mines. He could actually fall off a tractor and die. In other words, he was out there risking his life. Life was hostile. Number two, his focus was survival and protection. Number three, the male risks his life for food and protection. Number four, he did not need good communication skills. Your grandfather did not talk much to your grandmother. You check it. His conversation was very limited. Where's the food? Woman, I need sex. <laughs> there was no foreplay. Caveman came, Jane, boom, 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 finish, sleep. <laughs> Caveman. That's the way your granddaddy was. So he didn't need to learn to communicate because his wife didn't demand it. She knew that he was working 18 hours a day. He was tired. She knew that. She knew he was risking his life, that, she was, she, that he was stressed out. So she would have the food ready, have the hot pan with hot water to put his feet in. She'd have his newspaper ready. She would make sure the kids go to sleep, don't bother him. Why? Because that was her hard-working, risky caveman. She cared for him and he was her giant of provider. So she didn't want to even talk. Matter of fact, your grandfather, my father's and grandmother's house is very quiet. There was no need for communication. I'm talking about history now. Watch this. Number five, surviving was difficult, but relationships were comparatively easy. Why? Because the woman knew her job and the man knew her job, his job. The man knew I go to get the bacon. Woman knows I cook it. The man knows I build a house. The woman knows I make it a home. Very simple. The man knows I give you children. The woman knows I nurture them. The man knows I bring home the money. The woman knows you manage it. So there was very easy relationships. It was simple for my grandmother and my father, grandfather to live together. Matter of fact, my father and mother was a part of this historical environment. I've never seen my mother and father slap, hit, curse, or speak harder one another. Why? Because they were part of this generation. My father worked, my mother stayed at home. Father built a house, mama made it a home. Daddy bought him the food, mama made it a meal. No conflict of roles. It was easy to be a man. As a matter of fact, the way you measured manhood in those days was you build a house and you buy the food. So you are a man. Even if you were shacking up and sleeping around, if you still built a house, and bought the food they still say yeah but he's he but he's still a good man am i right why he built the house he bought him the food manhood was easy but here's a difficult one men and women existed in different spheres simple to be a man back then and number and number seven they depended on each other in order to survive my mother needed my father to bring home the bacon, to buy the house, to buy the clothing. She depended on him and my father needed my mother to keep the house, to cook the food, to clean the clothes. So there was a perfect dependency which created perfect partnership and it didn't need to be built on love. This is very important. I'm telling you the life of a man just 40 years ago. What were the implications of this lifestyle? Number one, basic needs required specific roles and skills. So once a woman knew how to sew, she was a good woman. And a man knew how to make money and buy a house, he was a, great, he was a good man. So the roles are very simple. Number two, there was a natural separation of roles. A man know what a man's supposed to do, a woman know what a woman's supposed to do, so to be a man was easy, just do what males do. Then you are a man. If you are a woman, you do what women do, you are a woman. So you sew the clothes, you cook the food, you clean the house, you are a good woman. You buy the house, you bring them the food, and you protect the kids, you are a good man. Very simple roles, they know it. So a woman says, that's a real man. A man would say, she's a real woman. They knew who each other was. Now listen carefully. Roles were determined by biology. In other words, once you are a male, there are certain things you're not supposed to do, like play with dolls. 
See, the roles are very simple. Once you were a female, you ain't supposed to play with tractors. So just being born decided your roles. If you are a male, you're supposed to learn a trade. If you are a woman, you got to learn to sew. So every woman had to learn to sew, learn to cook, learn to clean. Every man had to learn a trade, go to work, and learn to build a house. So the roles were all laid out even by their biology. It was easy to be a man. Stay with me. The partnership in survival produced an interdependence that gender generated a mutual respect and appreciation of each other. In other words, the, the male respected the woman because she cooked, she cleaned, she sold, and she nurtured. He respected her. He respected her. I didn't say he loved her. He respected her because of what she brought to the partnership. A woman respected the man because he built the house. He bought the food. He made sure they were protected. He did what's the point? He kept the lights on. He kept the water running. So she respected him as a man. So the respect was mutual. It was easy to be respected. We got a problem now with what I call the tra traditional roles of men. Here's a question. Is a man still supposed to be the breadwinner and the protector? Things have been distorted now. Number two. Is a man still the leader and authority in the home? Do you know why your grandfather was the head of the home? Because he bought it. Stay with me, very serious, Bishop. Do you know why your grandfather was respected in the house? Because he paid for it. Do you know why he was the head of the house? Because it was his house. In other words, he was head, not because they voted. He was head because of what he did. Follow me now, this is going to get deep in a minute. So a man was a man because of what he did. The question is, is a man still the head and the leader of the house? Very important question. And is the man still the breadwinner and the protector? Your grandfather's and your father's life has been completely destroyed. Case in point, when you meet a woman today, she already got a house. Can we talk just a couple minutes? <laughs> she got a house. Secondly, she making more than you. Let's not talk about bread now. Mm-hmm. And she don't need her protection, she got mace. So everything that made your father a man has been canceled. Are you getting it? That's why you're confused. So when you meet a woman today, and the woman says, be a man, you go into confusion. Because your father says, yes boy, put your foot down. And you know, <laughs> and you say, but dad, it ain't my floor. <laughs> Come on, let's talk. Son, if you bring home the bacon, you got a right to demand that she cook it. Dad, she owned the pig. <laughs> so everything that made him a man doesn't exist for you. That's why you're having problems with the woman in your life. And what makes you so depressed and frustrated and stressed out is that she keeps on telling you, be a man, be a man. And you don't know how to be it because what made your father a man doesn't exist and you keep trying to find what your father had. Are you still the leader in the house? Well, the question is, is it your house? I'm working it. <laughs> See, and men are going through problems and they don't understand what happened. Everything went crazy. I'm going to show you in a minute how, how we got like this. Number three, is a man still the show to show chivalry? In other words, you know, your grandfather, your mother waited for him to open the door. 
Why? That's what men do. It was a role for a man. Your, your, your mother waited for your father to pull the chair out. Why? That's what men do. Today, the women you know, you open the door for them, you, you, are you, am I crippled or something? Am I crippled? I don't need to open the door for me. You pull the chair out. What you pull that chair out for? I don't need no man to pull no chair out for me. Your grandfather, when he took your grandmother out, there was no question who paid for the meal. Chivalry. But today, you take a woman out, she got more money than you, and she say, order what you want. <laughs> so now you're confused. How do I be a man with this woman? I go home to a house that ain't mine. I drive a car that ain't mine. I open a refrigerator that ain't mine. I turn the TV on that ain't mine. Plasma flat screen. And I got a bank account that ain't mine. And she still says, be a man. Stay with me. Bishop and I are going to help you all this week. I say, you going to get some help this week. Number four, very important, is a man still the defender and the protector of his family and property. You know, your grandfather, I mean, the minute he came home, everybody ran. Why? He was the protector, the head of the house. If anybody touched his family, he would go into action. Your, your grandmother felt safe when your father, grandfather was around. Today, a woman doesn't need you to protect her anymore. She carry a gun in her purse, you know, Madea. She got a mace in a pocketbook. So you don't need to protect a woman anymore. She got her own car with her own electric, you know, windows. She got a cell phone with 911. She don't need you to be a man to protect her anymore. So now you feel helpless. This last one is important. Write this down. Men don't know if women need them anymore. And that's what you're struggling with right now. And you feel useless. How do we get like this? Now, what could be worse than a man not feeling valuable anymore? The result is an angry male. And that's why prison is filled with them. Do you know why a man would slap a woman? Because he doesn't know what to do. See, 99% of the men in this room are angry, but they are suppressing it. We are angry at a society who messed us up and didn't tell us how to be a man. The society destroyed all of what made our father a man and didn't give us a replacement. So your woman tells you, be a man, and you go, okay. Uh, I'm going to build you a house. She says, I already got a house. He said, okay, uh, I'll give you some money. She said, I got more than you. Okay, I'll bring on the bacon. She said, I already got the pig. Okay, I'll protect you. I got my gun already. Okay, I'll pull the chair out for you. I go to the gym. I got muscles. I can do it myself. Okay, uh, 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 then she says, be a man. Okay. Uh... And then she says, be a man. And you go. Because the only thing you got left is your strength. Domestic violence is a result of angry men who are suppressing their anger because society have destroyed all that made them man. And that's why you have difficulty finding a woman. You are intimidated by every woman you meet. You got a high school diploma, she got a PhD. And right away, you got problems. 
she drives a BMW, you got yourself a Toyota and a <coughs> Honda. And she says, be a man. She takes you to her apartment. 